and we're live ish. Uh, welcome to the 20th edition of the countdown, where me and someone else talk about our top 10 of something. Uh, so usually it's a lot of movies, but today we're talking some television uh, as we're now at the halfway point, halfway there, living on a prayer, as the cool kids would say, of the year 2023. So we're going to talk about our top 10 favorite TV shows currently, so far as Lisa says, how we sit at the halfway point. I am JPO, I'm not alone. I'm joined here by Brandon Cohen. Brandon, how are you? I'm doing fantastic. This is crazy. There's so many people watching the show. Like, it's just going up and up. Whoa, whoa. 10,000, 11,000. Whoa. Dude, you're you're missing a couple zeros. Oh, 10 million. No, I'm excited. I always love coming on this countdown show, ranking stuff. And it's our third TV show now. And uh, I think, I, I don't know. I like somebody, I had an interview the other day, the job interview, and they were like, at the end, they were like, so tell us, what are you binging lately? What's the last movie you watched? And the binging, I was like, here's the movie the shows I've watched. Bam, 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 bam. And then I couldn't even think of the last movie I watched. Like, I'm, really? I'm all on t- Like, TV is just, I love a half hour, an hour. I mean, I'll go into more, more detail of why I love some of these shows that, like, kind of fill the TV void for me a little bit. But, or sorry, the movie void for me. But, yeah, TV's awesome. I do agree. I, I like my TV as well. I, I, I try to stick up with my movies as well. but uh, So maybe I'm actually slacking a little bit in TV this year. I know I feel like I'm very comedy heavy, uh, at least mm-hmm. at this point in the year. Um, so yeah. yeah. I feel like you just pick one day. At, you just like Wednesday, you just go to the movie theater and just stay there for like 12 hours and just Oh, pretty much. That, that's that my new out. thing. I, I marathon every couple of weeks, yeah. <laughs> it works. I need to do that. That's why, that's why I'm – so I think that's why I watch so much TV because it's easy just to like – Mm-hmm. Let's just knock it out. All right, well, let's start knocking this out. Uh, if you have any honorable mentions, throw them out there. And then, uh, what's your number ten? So my honorable mentions, I think, are my comedy. I have some comedy up the list, but my honorable mentions: Dave had a fantastic season this year. Uh, amazing second half of it. Uh, Human Resources. I think I, I think I honorable mention this every year, along with Big Mouth every year. Uh, I think this season was even better than last year. I, didn't I talked see this about year. Mm-hmm. what. I didn't see this year. It's good. I mean, I, I, mean, I talked about it on the last list, I think. Uh, I, I, have, I put those as my honorable mention, both of them, just because it's gross and silly and stupid, but they cover a lot of like important topics like grief. And then there was a really good uh, side story with Eugene Levy voicing a character. Uh, that's fantastic. Um, and then Bad Batch. Bad Batch is a, a you know Star Wars. I had to pick... Some Star Wars Marvel thing. Uh, it's all the Dave Filoni stuff, the animated stuff is so good. That's why like Star Wars fans complain so much. But like, there's there's a bunch of good stuff out there. Um, so I really like the Bad Batch. Good season this year. Uh, next season's the last season. So excited for that. Oh, and I also need to have one more honorable mention. I need to get the name of it. Only one episode has been out so far. Um, it is called Reborn as a Vending Machine, and now I wonder the dungeon. Is in a weird anime. Quit like, making shit up. <laughs> no, no, no. It's a weird anime about a guy who like dies and comes back as a vending machine. Pretty interesting. Uh, only one episode of that so far. And, and wait, watching, wait, hold on, hold on. Where do you even find that? My brother told me about it. It's on Crunchyroll. I, I found it on. You okay. Can, you can watch it. It's like 20 minutes. It, it, you can find it on. on I'm not going YouTube. to. Yeah, I'll tell you about <laughs> it. At, at the end of our year when it's number one. Oh my and God. And then um, I'll throw a documentary. There's a netflix uh documentary series about the american gladiators that i'm working on right now that's uh pretty cool i didn't think about docs we could do docs it's a it's a docs it's six episodes no i'm just saying if i thought about that in the other night, i guess i'll have an extra honorable mention all right we'll tear yours Oh, you want me to do my honorables? All right. Uh, yeah, so right outside of my list, um, uh, The Goldbergs, fun little sitcom that we said goodbye to uh, this year, uh, based on our true story over at Peacock uh, with Kayla Kuko and Chris Messina. Uh, the Simpsons. Oh. Hey, man, who still watches The Simpsons? I do. Fuck you. Uh, it's still oh, funny and pretty consistent. Um, <laughs> Young Rock. Um, I'm a big wrestling fan, and you know, so I, I like that these last couple seasons have delved more into his wrestling career, so I'm into that. Um, shrinking is right outside of my list just because I feel I haven't seen enough of the season. Um, I you know stopped my Apple subscription at one point, so but I do need to get back to it. I think that could squeeze more in, into the higher with a uh, Jason Siegel and Harrison Ford. And then speaking of docs, again, just as a wrestling fan, uh, Dark Side of the Ring. I know yeah. we got to shout that out. Very well produced. Uh, a series I recommend many people don't like wrestling because it's just I haven't it's caught up with that, but the ones I've watched is awesome. Yeah, yeah. 
So what you got number 10? Number 10. Number 10, I am, so I talked about a second ago how I watch TV shows as my way of getting these stories where I don't have to watch like an hour and a half, two hour uh, movie. So I'm putting, my number 10 is Black Mirror. You know, I love these anthology style shows. I love the old, I love watching the old Twilight Zones on rainy days and seeing, oh, there's like, look at all the stars that were in these, or in these episodes and these self-contained stories. And I want more stuff like this. Like just get, like they had the, the Twilight Zone reboot. They had uh, some stuff, they had some, some big people in it. Um, but none of the stories were there that interesting. Black Mirror is, uh, this was like the least Black Mirror-y season, I would say. A lot of people were complaining about that. Like, wasn't very <laughs> technological. You know, you know it's, it's like, it's tech, like, like it's scary. Black Mirror is scary because it can be true. They dealt a lot more into horror. And then some of the stuff is like true crime, not been like really like technological based at all or supernatural. Um, but there was some really good Beyond the Sea with Josh, this one right here with Josh Hartnett and Aaron Paul is the standout. It's fantastic. Um, Joan is awful with Annie Murphy and Salma Hayek. Again, fantastic. The other three, I heard Hayek was really good. Yeah, yeah. The other three were meh. Um, I like Maisie Day. I liked uh, I liked some of it. Just, just weren't very Black Mirror to me. But I love this concept of the show, and I love that it's just an hour. You get a nice, good story, and then you watch another one. So I put it on my list purely because I love this type, this concept. Um, of this anthology series and i just want more of it no very nice yeah no that's definitely something i mean uh, that's another one that's a blind spot for me here so last couple of seasons i haven't caught up uh i saw like m- most of last season i haven't seen any of this season yet so uh coming in at uh, my number 10 here going back to comedy and a long-standing comedy that still like, holds up even though the seasons are getting kind of shorter which might hold it against being a little bit higher but i still think pretty consistent is wow. south park uh just once again just um I don't know, just la- la- laughs per minute each episode kind of holding up here. I uh, really enjoyed the, uh, the finale going with Mr. Garrison. And, um, yeah, just always fun to catch up with these kids here. It's another one just like um, – I'd say even better than The Simpsons as far as just kind of co- continuously, uh, you know, keeping the, the, the laughs up and exploring these characters, sometimes getting more more side characters. Butters is always a great MVP as well. So, um, yeah, uh, they, they made my top ten at the moment. Uh, South Park coming in at number ten. Yeah, the, the ones I've seen are still so funny. Uh, I haven't seen the last few seasons. A couple years ago, I watched like a, I did like a, I, I started binging like and I did like four seasons and then I stopped. Mm-hmm. Like right, once PC Principal came in, I watched like another season after that. Um, so I think I'm I'm due to like just binge up like 40 episodes and catch up to. Work. Yeah, and, and they are they are getting short now. Like I said, the last couple seasons have been like six episodes. And oh wow! Even for that, it was a lot of 10, 10 episode ones. And I have Paramount Plus now, so I need to watch the like pandemic stuff. Yeah, and they got like kind of like short movies on there now as well, and including seeing them in the in the future, which is a lot of fun. Yeah, so, yeah I need check to watch out, that. check those out. Uh, what do we got at uh, number nine? All right, number nine was number ten. And then last night I watched another episode, and now it's number nine. And then on Wednesday when another episode comes out, it could be up even higher. There's only three episodes of it so far. I know you said you were thinking about canceling Apple TV, so you might not have seen this one. It is Number nine is Hijack on Apple TV with Idris Elba. Now, I thought this was a movie at first. I did too. So, yeah, and my dad was like, <laughs> I, watch the new... I was so set on My dad was like, you want to watch the new Hijack show? I'm like, I was like, the movie looks interesting. He's like, no, it's a show. I was like, oh, and actually made it more interesting in my mind because like we've seen so many, right? You know, plain hijack movies, but we've never seen a plain hijack TV show, so it's pretty cool. I don't know if they're doing it hourly, like they're hour episodes. It's a six-hour flight. I don't, I can't tell if they're doing like it's it, it maybe. I think they're three hours into the flight and it's three hours, so it might be like each out each episode is like an hour of the of the you know the conflict. They're not like explicitly saying that though, but it's it's so it's like really really interesting. Um, I thought it was just be like Idris Elba's Liam Neeson and just like beating people up on the plane, but like it's more psychological than that. He's trying to get into them. He's a negotiator, like a corporate negotiator, so he's trying to get into the mind of these hijackers. They're trying to get a message to the ground control. They a lot of it takes place on the ground, not a lot of it, but like there's a storyline on the ground too that where like the ground control trying to see what's going on with the plane. 
So you have both sides, like what's going on with them or, or they, they know where what's going on up here. So it's super interesting, psychological thriller. Um, and I'm really excited to see where it goes. So I have it at nine right now, just because only three episodes, um, so I need to see more, but I can see this going up because it's, it's a really, really, really interesting watch. No, oh, nice. Yeah, no, yeah, this is one. Yeah, I have not seen either uh, anything at all. So, um, yeah, might have to check that out. Uh, between that, uh, the new Seth Rogen show. Yeah, I'll probably be back on Apple pretty soon here. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, I get that in uh, my number nine. Uh, and your number nine. My number nine is a show that uh, was so missed that they finally brought it back 13 years later. Uh, the third season of Party Down. Uh, <laughs> it took a while, fans, but uh, we finally got it here um, about uh, Ken Marino trying to run. Um, uh, they go to different events, so it's always it's a perfect setup too for uh, guest stars because uh, they go to different events, whether it's uh, you know bar mitzvah, summer gathering, this, that, or the other. Um, Adam Scott uh, is in this as well, um, and of course you got all the, all the, the guest stars as well. Jane Lynch pops kind of in and out a little bit here. Um, Tyrell Williams from Brock Meyer is added to the cast here. And again, some good guest stars thrown in there. Uh, Bobby Moynihan, Jennifer Garner, and actually several episodes as well. And uh, yeah, it was just fun kind of catching up with the group here. There's a reason, you know, this was one of those shows that I find myself going back to the first couple seasons kind of organically and just kind of binging them again, like quick 10 season episodes, uh, 10 episode seasons. And um, going back to it and um yeah i could see why they were finally finally brought it back here so uh, i had a, a lot of fun catching up wouldn't mind it being uh, whether season four comes next year or in another 10 years <laughs> uh i'm down for it so party yeah. down coming in at number nine nice i'll have to check that out uh my number eight is a show you might have heard of a show that came out a long time ago and they took 13 years to come back. My number eight is Party Down. Hey, what? <laughs> I was like, a, how do I do this? You had a good uh, face just now, by the way. I thought you would like either A, didn't care, or B, I didn't seen it. <laughs> no, um, this is a show. I, I watched it when it came out, the original, uh, like I think the first season. So like a week or two ago, I actually, uh, getting prepped for this, I went back and I rewatched the the two and then rewatched and then watched the third. And it's it's just as good as it ever was. Like it's still just as funny, maybe better in some episodes. I don't know. It, it, it's they, they did such a good job of like why are these people still, uh, you know, still working here. They did a good job of, of just like it's not just like a it didn't feel like a cop out to just have these characters. Like one of them is you know he's he's he needs money for he's going through something with his personal life. One of them gets canceled. One of them is bought the company. So like they do a really good job of it's like an, it felt like a natural progression. Which is why uh, I really enjoyed it because a lot of this time when you get these 13 years later, it just seems like a cash grab. Mm -hmm. But this seems like it's something they really loved. So they did it and they did it justice. And Jennifer Garner plays great in it. Um, you get everybody come back. You get all also, uh, Nick Offerman's in there. You get all the guest mm -hmm. stars. You get they, they touch on current events. They touch on you know, the Nazi parties, they touch on COVID, they touch on getting, you know, cancel culture, they touch on everything in a really, really funny way. And it's just, uh, I don't think we're getting, I Googled it, I don't think we're getting a fourth season. It um, didn't seem like it, from what I could tell, yeah. It didn't seem like it. Um, but again, enough people talk about it <laughs> 13 years from now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's on every, it's on all the, like, mid-year lists of, like, best shows, so... Who knows? I hope so because it's just a fun watch. Like, I, uh, like, especially with the with the, with, the, with the concept you were saying. Like, it's you know a party a week, and this one's yeah. more. This this one they definitely like intertwine the story for like more in the or at least with Adam Scott's character like more party to party than last one. Um, but like, I would I could watch episodes like this for forever. This little short little, you know, different part. What, yeah. like, what hijinks are they going to get to now? What guest stars are they going to bring? Like, I guess go back yeah, to no, the Black, it's great, you know. And, uh, go back to the Black Mirror thing I was talking about. Like, just get these fun <laughs> guest stars working in fun roles. And I'm going to get into more of this. Like, just fun yeah, actors. And, yeah, shout, shout out to Ryan Hansen and uh, Martin Starr. You know, perfect in their roles, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, coming in at my number eight, <laughs> uh, you mentioned it as an honorable 
uh, Little Dickies, Dave. Uh, we got the third season here. Um, kind of like Atlanta to a degree as far as, you know, you never necessarily know where the show's going to go. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They definitely have, are cool with kind of going on these, these sidetrack stories, whether it's, them breaking down and spending the night at one of their friend's houses who are, who's very religious, uh, whether it's uh, the finale with Brad Pitt, who's fantastic. Oh, good. Uh, best episode of the season, uh, best episode of the year that of like, yeah, yeah. Know. And you, and again, like, you know, who, who, who saw that coming uh, to even um, uh, Rachel McAdams, another, another strange guest star popping up in more than one episode. Um, and the, the, what is it? The Met Gala along with uh, Travis Parker and Machine Gun Kelly and everyone. And uh, yeah, just again, uh, this, um, uh, I, I, yeah, like I said, there were several episodes that I thought were really interesting and this might be my favorite season or not. I have to look back on it. It's but, the best. Uh, I think it's the best season. I just think yeah, as far as like, yeah, as far as like memorable wise. Yeah. I, I do think it might be up there. Even him up. Uh, Faking his death, that's an interesting little plot line they have going on as well. Um, like I said, the one where they stay at the girl's house almost turns into like a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> they have fun with that. Uh, the the, uh, the Brad Pitt one turns into like a hostage uh, <laughs> movie real quick. So, uh, yeah, I always have, have fun with Dave and uh, his career and trying to get to the top. <laughs> it, it's just great. Like you say, it's very similar to um, Atlanta. I might like it more. I, I, I relate to it a little bit more, you know. For some obvious reasons, um, but you're a white you know, rapper. There you go, exactly. Um, but it does. But I, I do love again going back to like just weird stories. I like that they feel comfortable enough to go off on these like tangents of like these random episodes that mean nothing to the overarching story, right? Um, but it's just so funny. Um, it's the, I think he's like they're getting into the, the writers are getting into their groove of like of what the show is. And, you know, I could keep, again, I keep watching this for a long time. This was on my list. It was on my list. It got knocked off um, from by my next one, which my number seven is, we're heading over to Peacock now. My number seven is Poker Face from Ryan mm-hmm. Johnson. This one, it caught my interest, like, after I watched knives out too i think he had already announced this it was coming so i was like oh interesting mystery series coming from ryan johnson and tosh leone it's a murder of the week style show um but i watched this in two days because my friend signed in on my tv to watch the royal rumble so i was able to (laughs) so i was able to get peacock for a couple days and it is it's it's just Natasha Leone is a, is hilarious in this, and it's so silly. It's just like she always finds she always finds herself in these these um, you know these murder cases, but it doesn't feel forced. The guest stars you're seeing there's is star studded. It's so much fun just to see all these people. Here's all the guest stars, all these people coming in and just having a blast with these like fun, goofy, silly stories. Uh, they do a really good job. Um, unlike like Law and Order and stuff like that, where it starts with like the murder, but it's only like a couple minutes. Like I always watch whenever I watch a random TV, like a show will come on. It's like, what is the show? It's like on a nightclub, and then a guy will get murdered, and it's like, oh, it's Law and Order. Like it has nothing to do with anything. This they do a really good job. They spend like 10, 15, sometimes 20 minutes with the characters beforehand setting up the murder or the or the disaster where it happens, and then it cuts, and then there's like a, a a soundtrack that they throw in that is like her theme, Tasha Leone's theme. And then it kind of tells her story, how she got to that location and then how she's going to figure it out. So they do a really good job of like, you actually care for each story. And this is, I say this all the time, but this is another one that's like, they can keep making, just keep pumping these out, keep making them. Cause each one is just so much fun. Cause it, it goes back to the black mirror thing. They're hour long stories where you get different types of things. Some are some are more murder mystery. Some are, you know, there's one with George Gordon Levitt, they're stuck in a cabin. So it's a little more like, not horror-y, but a little more thrillery. You have, um, and then just all these these fun people, just people just look like they're just having fun, like making stuff. So uh, took me a while to watch this. But once I started it, I finished it in two days. And it is, this like ru- this this ruined my list because I had a bunch of stuff on here and I was like well, I have to read. <laughs> came out of nowhere and I love this show. Uh, came out of nowhere like an RKO. Uh, that's a wrestling reference. 
Um, <laughs> uh, very nice, very nice. Maybe I'll talk about it later. Uh, my number seven, uh, we got Righteous Gemstones is back on mm. over at the HBO or the Max if you're one of those, those cool kids. Uh, not HBO Max, though. Calm down. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so we're, we're back with uh, – it's very Danny McBride as in, you know, he's kind of an asshole and so is his sister and so is Adam Devine, but – they're just assholes that are fun to watch here. Um, I'll, I'll try to, you know, keep their church going now that John Goodman is pretty much retired here. And I think some of the people are starting to lose faith in them, which they, they should because they're they're bad human beings. Um, but again, very fun to watch here. Um, you throw in Walter Goggins popping up uh, now and then. There you see Shea Wiggum. Uh, Steven Dorff. Where's Steven Dorff been? He's here. And uh, <laughs> um, also enjoyed the uh, presence of uh, – they added a few people this season. Uh, Lucas Haas. Another guy are the sons of uh, Steve Zahn, and I want to say it's third rock from the sun, Kristen Johnson. Uh, fun seeing her again. Haven't seen her in a minute uh, in something oh, yeah. personally. So, um, and there's a good story arc up there because they're they're the more like strict religious people, and uh, they actually don't like how the gemstones have kind of uh, carry themselves, and uh, that's ramping up now. In fact, the, the last episode that aired last night, I think actually, I'm pretty sure, um, kind of shows kind of it, it was an actually it was a like a prequel episode it's, it's them as kids and um it's, it's the younger john goodman and whatnot which pretty good uh uh deep fake technology especially for a tv show i was mentioning before with indiana jones sometimes it threw me off a little bit here but uh i i thought they did pretty good uh de-aging uh john goodman by about you know 20 years or so um so yeah and uh it, it was a really good kind of wrap up to kind of show how these people got to where they are when you first meet them they're they're really like against the family and like almost to a violent degree and you're kind of now getting more of the picture here. So uh, interesting. And uh, again, another thing I'll always give credit to Danny McBride as far as like, at least about a doubt, vice principles in this, you don't necessarily know where it's going always too. You know what I mean? There's always some decent twists and turns. Mm -hmm. Uh, You can get violent as well. So yeah, uh, Righteous Gemstones coming in at number seven. Yeah, this one, I don't, it makes no sense to me. (laughs) I watch, I love He's Pounding Down. Uh-huh. I love I love Vice Principals, and I don't watch this show. And I don't. That's know why. weird. And it is weird, and it like, is because <laughs> I'm gonna love it. I know I'm gonna love it. I, and like when once I when I saw the commercials last season for Eric Andre, I love Eric Andre, so I was like, of course I'm. Gonna yeah, watch and he's shows. a big part of last season. And I still just haven't watched it, so I don't know why. Mm. Um, it's one of Vice's greatest mysteries. Um, <laughs> yes. I'm going to watch it one of these days. I will watch this show because it has everybody I love in it, and there's no. I'm like not worried. Sometimes you're like, oh, I don't want to like watch the show. I might not like it. Like, and I'm last season's really good. Eric Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm guaranteed to like the show. So yeah, I don't know. It's it's, it's like a blind spot that I don't understand why. Um, but we'll get to it some oh, someday. Oh, I'll, okay. you know what? I'm gonna throw this one on for next. We'll talk about it at the end of the year. Unless you don't like it. <laughs> oh, we'll talk. We'll talk about it either way. Okay. Um, okay. Number six. This is tricky because. This is a show I watched four seasons of for four years now or five years, whenever, how long it's been on. Everyone goes crazy for it. And I like it. I see. I think it's a good show. Is it the greatest show of all time? No. It's amazing. It's really well done. The acting is incredible. But every episode is kind of the same thing. I'm going with Succession. This was a, I feel like this was a good season. But every season is kind of the same old shtick of, like, uh, you know, we have to get a deal going. Okay, and we have to, how are we going to get this deal? Is the deal going to go through? We got to get the deal. Is the deal going to go through? And at the end of the season, the deal doesn't go through or does go through. And that's the, that. That's it. Now, it sounds like I hate the show. I don't. I do <laughs> it think does. I do, I do think it's fantastic. I'm knocking it down to six because I don't think it's, I, like, I guess why people love it. But like it just doesn't do, doesn't push it over to the top five for me. But it I definitely have to recognize it for what it is because it is fantastic writing. This season they did something that was shocking and brilliant, I think, and it led to some really really interesting stories. I do think they nailed the ending. That's why it's at my number six because they they nailed the, they nailed their landing big time. And I enjoyed watching every week. It's just, I couldn't quite get it to my top. It's not a top five show for me personally. I understand why some people have a top five, but it is definitely a top 10 show because of lots of the performances this season. Kieran Culkin was so good this season. Uh, I hate Shiv. 
Um, that's all I have to say. Nice. We hate all the characters. That's another tough thing. It's like all the one of these shows where you hate oh, everybody, true. so it's like tough to root for somebody. But it's it is fun just to watch these people be horrible, horrible people. Uh, this is it's a big blind spot for me, so I, I can't agree or disagree. I do see what you're saying though, as far as it maybe maybe blended bleeding it a little bit, but still being really good as well. Yeah, I couldn't tell you like each. I couldn't tell you like specific episodes. Like Breaking Bad episodes, I could tell you about and be like, oh, that that was the episode where this happened. That was the episode where this happened. Yeah. This one's just like, oh, that was the season with this deal, I think, and that was the season with this deal. This newest season was the most memorable, in my opinion. Um, so that's why it's like tough for me because it's just kind of like. It's one big like forty episode story, but like it doesn't really it doesn't have enough for me it doesn't have enough identity of like each individual episode. Gotcha. All right. Uh, yeah, that's a blind spot for me. Uh, coming in my number uh, six though, uh, I think we're still over at uh, the HBO Max uh, at HBO. Uh, the other two mm. um, is what I got. It's a comedy. Um, so the initial premise is. You know, what if, what if, kind of the initial premise is like, what if Justin Bieber also had like siblings that are really trying to make it? Um, but that's very much the light premise of it because it, um, it expends so much more on that about the, uh, the other two that are way less famous here. Um, their mom, even Molly Shannon, who's fantastic, um, becomes, uh, super famous as well. She has like her own talk show now in the last couple seasons. Um, Ken Marino, uh, from Party Down, uh, popping up twice on my list now here. He's, uh, the, uh, I don't know, oh, he's the, the father, the stepfather, but anywho, he's the father and manager as well. And, um, this season I thought was really good too. There's some great episodes. Um, um, he's a struggling actor. There's some great episodes of him trying to um, act on like a sitcom and trying to do like act, uh, interesting things. Him dating a um, method actor <laughs> and trying to have a relationship with him, even though his his boyfriend's always in constantly in character here. Um, uh, really enjoyed the story arc between the sister and um, uh, uh, the guy next, uh, not the guy next door, but um, her her boyfriend character and and their their struggling relationship as well. I love how that ended the season here. Um, and also too, really interesting thing about how you know, always looking for that next big thing and just maybe realizing that like you got to kind of find happiness within yourself more so than just like your your goals and achievements here because you know he's a struggling actor who's never happy. Oh, now he's got a TV show, he's still not happy, and now he's in a movie and he's still not happy. And you know, kind of his realization of that, um, I thought was really well done here. It gets one of the more dramatic uh episodes and then seasons here, not overly by any means, but like I did enjoy that. That like they kind of it was a little more, um, because while it is fantastical in moments here, um, for instance, Wanda Sykes is also great when she finds out uh the the popular brother um is having mental health issues, she goes, My client has mental health issues, and she's all excited about how she can get publicity off of that. <laughs> and so it's fantastical at some point too, but it also kind of trailed back as well. Um, him trying to be friends um, with somebody he has scored was really well, good as well. So, uh, yeah, the other two uh, show that I've warmed up to a lot, actually. Like That first season's probably not in my top, like, 15 or 20, but the last few seasons I've enjoyed a lot. And almost to the point where I'm like, I gotta go rewatch season one. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I haven't I haven't watched this. I, I've heard... I remember being interested when it was on Comedy Central. I saw, like... Right, that's right. It is a flip flipper. Yeah, it's a flipper. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I saw a bunch of I saw a bunch of clips of there was like my gay brother music video that seemed mm-hmm. really funny. I just I just didn't watch it. And then I last season I heard it was great, and then this season I heard it was great. And then unfortunately, yeah, for whatever it. reason, and again I don't know if I just need to go back or I don't know what my time frame was, but I don't love the Comedy Central season that much. But um, I don't dislike it, but I don't love it. Oh yeah, I, well, I got, yeah. Then I because I, that's why I like it kind of put it on my mind, and I heard like like I think last year I saw like the other two. I was like, wait, that's the show from. That like com- random Comedy Central show I saw yeah. a year ago. Um, so I definitely want to check it out. Unfortunately, it seems like there were some drama behind the scenes that might have led to its cancellation. Oh. I had no idea about that. So <laughs> yeah, the two creators <laughs> there was there was like a hostile work environment or something, and it looks like the oh, show yeah. shut down. So and let maybe that maybe they kick the creators away and come back, but it does seem like yeah. it's been canceled. Unfortunately, but uh, yeah, I hope it's not. I mean, it's not. It didn't leave off in the worst cliffhanger, you know. If it does, so. just go back to Comedy Central. You know, you're good. Go back to Comedy Central. <laughs> well, no, I'm sure it's going to do with HBO. I would imagine. No, no, no. It's the two. I heard that the two writers from, right. from SNL. I've heard there's some issues with them. Uh, Bad people. 
There has to be good people and they make good TV. I okay. know. I mean, that's what I felt bad about uh, the Goldbergs because, like, George Siegel in real life died, so they had to kill the grandpa. And then everything yeah, like, Garland was a dick, so yeah. they had to kill the dad. I'm like, damn, man, poor family. Like, <laughs> yeah, rough. All right. So we talked beforehand how I my top five could be in any given year could be my favorite show of the year. It's it's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy year for me. So, number five. I can't believe I'm saying I'm a number five. Number five is Ted Lasso. <laughs> which is like one of my favorite shows of all time. But it's tough. I have to put it at five. Just The only reason is just because some of the stuff I'm putting above it, I think, had really, really good overall seasons. Um, this had one of my favorite finales ever. If it is the season series finale, it does seem like it's a series finale, or at least... In this iteration, maybe they'll bring it back with just the team without Ted. You know, it's or sorry to spoil anything for anybody, but what? <laughs> but but it, it does seem like this iteration of the show is over, and then there's some stories to tell in the future. That's why I didn't like this season as much because I didn't know where it was going. The first couple episodes, the first like five episodes, Ted didn't really seem like he was in it. That was my biggest complaint. Every episode, I was like, this show's called Ted Lasso. Where's Ted Lasso? Um, in hindsight, I want to revisit it. I might like those episodes more knowing now that it's like they might be building up these characters to tell more stories of them in the future. Um, so that was just my big, that's why it's at number five, just because of, I, I think the early, early episodes of the season, I think we're stumbled a little bit, but it had such a strong the last four episodes were fantastic. And the last, the finale was so good. Uh, there's, you can watch 10 minute videos of like every reference from any point in the show that they reference in this in the series or in the finale like there was things from like the very first scene of the very first season that they brought back into the very last scene of the very last season and it's just there's like small little things about like little easter eggs of like ted gave someone a book and then you can see then like three seasons later you can see that same book is all torn up so just they did such a good job of ending this season i'll say the season because we don't know but Seems like it, but this show, it's just you know we're getting that Juno Temple uh, spinoff. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, who, I, I could see it just being like AFC Richmond, and they just could bring it back like that, and I would watch it, and it would be fantastic. Um, so yeah, Ted Lasso is one of my favorite shows, maybe of all. It, it's such a great show. It's crazy to have it at five, but I got some heavy hitters. So bitch. All right, so my number five. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, only the probably the most mainstream. Let's go. Let me double check something. Yep, yep. Uh, oh, actually, I mean, unless you count FX, uh, and Comedy Central, I guess, because of South Park. Uh, the, but the only one that's on actually on, you know, there's channels called Fox and ABC. They still have shows uh, mm-hmm. on CBS. Uh, so the only one, only one from them. Uh, I have Ghosts, uh, which I've talked about before talk about uh, coming in. Yeah, my number five. It's still there because uh, um, it's just a perfect kind of little 30-minute, you know, and with without commercials. So if you're watching, you know, kind of on demand later, 22-minute, 20 20-minute, 20 uh, you know, sitcom here about uh, this young couple who uh, uh, gets a – they're going to revamp this place for um, – an overnight hotel and uh she falls cracks her head and uh now she can see everyone that's ever died on the premises um and i just i love the characters that surround them um i always find myself laughing um you know they, they find ways to kind of get new guest stars popping in and out you know because again hotel so whether it's the humans um solving some of their past issues there's also some sweet moments of you know finding out you know oh my my daughter's still alive can you somehow talk to her and uh so they, there's ways to sneak in some some sweet stuff as well as always have the humor as well and uh yeah I, i've always found it pretty consistent um it was a british uh i almost said rip off but you know what i mean a british re- a remake of a british show um here so um some good characters here so uh yeah uh, it was a show that uh just, just makes me laugh a good sitcom here which uh is very very high on my list here evidently as far as uh, a lot of a lot of comedy so far in the first half of the year yeah, um, maybe the fifth time we do one of these shows, I'll and you bring this up, I'll finally watch it. Um, Give a couple episodes, chuckle, chuckle with us. I, I have nothing against it. I just haven't. I, you know what? I'll add it to my my TV time tracker right now. What TV? What <laughs> TV time tracker? I use a the app I use is called TV Time, and you enter the shows you're watching, and then it tells mm-hmm. you like 
it's coming on TV or a new episode airing. Ah, uh, okay. Things like that. I have something similar. I use uh, track, T-R-A-K-T. Yeah, I've seen you post about that. I, I need to, yeah. But I'll, yeah, I don't know if it might be better. I don't know, but... I, like I don't know if it's better. It. One thing I liked about mine is like you can actually log in the episode. So like if you ever get kind of like lost on a TV show, you can kind of go back and go, oh, okay, I stopped at episode three. And, like, yeah, this one, yeah, this one is a two. And if you and if you watch like okay. you're logging it and you like you you finished all season two and you hit season two, you can see like I've watched all of it and it'll like autofill. Yeah, and it does yeah, percentages so it too, uh, which is interesting too. So it will tell you like you've seen seventy percent of. Yeah, Walking it's great Dead. because sometimes <laughs> like. Like we'll talk about blind spots afterwards. There's one show that just came back like a week ago that I was like, oh wait, I totally forgot what the show even existed, but because of TV time, it like popped up for me. So you need some. Like, there's too much. There's too much crap. So you need. You need to try. Like we need technology to help us pay attention to technology more. You know. Um, all right, number four. Number four. I'm gonna say this a lot. Again, a show that could be has. I think was number one in one of my other lists. Could be number one, you know, um, in any other year. But again, I think maybe the three above it are a little newer shows. So I haven't had as much seasons with it. So it's like, you no, know, newer and cooler. Um, but number four is Barry. Final season. I'm sure we'll talk about it in a little bit with you. Uh, great final season. Um, I like the the thing they did at the halfway point. I really like that. Um, I love a good last season time jump. Spoiler. Is this, are these spoilers or no spoilers? Like, I wouldn't go too heavy, but I, you got to say light spoilers. Sure, go for it. Okay, light spoilers. In this. I just wasn't sure what, what we're doing here. Okay, I don't want to spoil it. All I care about is not spoiling it for you, but I know you've seen this. Well, so. I've seen it. I'm just saying. But yeah, no, I know you have. <laughs> yeah, I, I know you have. I, I just I, so I was like, that's why there's a couple things I just want to be. I'm not going to give too much away. Again, another one stuck the landing. Uh, is this the third final season of the show I've talked about so far? Season four. Oh, I'm telling you. Oh, third Recession. Maybe. Yeah. Barry and Ted Lasso. Yeah. Three. Like, it was they're all back to back to back, too. It was just like ending, ending, ending. Um, this season was, I think, fantastic. They stuck the landing. Um, still so funny, but still so dark. Uh, heartbreaking at some times. Hank. Hank's the best. Hank is the Hank is the best character on the history of television. Um and they just did such a good job here. Um, uh, and four seasons. like It's just, you didn't overstay your welcome. They told the story they wanted to tell. Same thing with Ted Lasso. They told the story they wanted to tell. Yeah. They could Honestly, like as much as I love the show, they couldn't do too much of it because it's like, okay, how long is this now going to just... Yeah, this, this, this character needed a, a, fin- a finality to it, yeah. Exactly. It's like, how long is this guy going to keep doing the thing? You know, yeah. it's like De- Dexter went on for like 10 seasons, 11 seasons. It's like, wait, how long is this going to go for? You know, Barry, four seasons, perfect ribbon on it. You know, the first three, then this little final season to wrap everything up. Like, I like that too. Like, it seemed like every episode was getting closer to the finale instead of like some of these final seasons are like, oh, we'll get to the finale at the very last episode. But this one, like everything felt like it was le- like they were wrapping up the last three seasons in, in a really, really nice way. I still hate The Girlfriend. She's the most annoying character ever. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Uh, my my number four, uh, going off of, let's see, your number seven. Uh, it's it's uh, Lady Gaga's po- 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 Poker Face. Just kidding. Um, but yeah, Poker Face come in, coming in at my number four here. Hey, who knew in 2023 if you said, uh, who's still at the top? Of the American Pie cast mm-hmm. and that's hot right now. You'd say, well, it's either A, Siffler's mom, or B, it's Natasha Leone. Yeah, They're crazy, having, right? The best careers out of that entire cast. Jason mm-hmm. Biggs, I know you got that commercial right now uh, with Stifler, but uh, yeah, Natasha Leone uh, is having uh, the best resurgence. I really liked her um, Netflix show as well. Um, Blink Russian Doll or something. something? Yeah, there you go. Russian Doll is also that. Yeah. really good. Really interesting. I definitely highly recommend. Uh, the first season there as well. It's just kind of a t- two cliffhanger for season two, and then I don't think we got a three. But uh, so yeah. I liked her in that. So I was definitely down uh, for this here. Ryan Johnson also sold me here. I don't think he's made a bad movie yet. Um, and you can definitely see a little Correct. bit of the knives out in this. Um, and I was, again, kind of like Party Down, but obviously now in, well, th- there's a lot of comedic moments in this as well, and she's super charming. Um, but also, I'm just a sucker for great guest stars, and I, I almost mm-hmm. don't even want to start naming them because i know i'm going to forget somebody but like 
Cherry Jones, Nick Nolte, Tim Meadows, uh, JGL, Justin Gordon. Like, there's, there's so good. Every episode that I, I'm sorry to forget their names, but the hippie Adrian ladies. Brody. Um, uh, yeah, you got uh, Simon Helbert from Big Bang Theory pops up. You got, yeah, there's just, it's it's perfect in that case. Even Benjamin Brad is intertwined as the guy kind of chasing her. Adrian Brody's um, dad, who I won't give away because it was a fun Adrian, little, oh, yeah, Adrian Brody, fun little reveal. Is it Agent Brody? Like, Who's Agent Brody? Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, no, there's there's a lot going on each episode here. Um, I love the race car episode as well. Just mm-hmm. everything, man, from week to week to week. I, I, I do think it was a little like... <laughs> Damn, man, she has the worst luck ever because she's always falling into shit, you know? Yeah, but it's like, just like every it's town, just, but still. It's just like, you know, just buy in and just have fun, you know? Fun exactly, dogs. exactly. Yeah, that's the only thing you gotta gotta slightly ignore, ignore. But like, other than that, like I said, well, well written, well directed usually here. I love the guest stars and I love her. And yeah, this this was really good. Um, looking forward to see what they can do with season, season two, I believe, is mm-hmm. coming. So yeah, poker face. Um, I, I, would, I wouldn't be surprised if that's still. Last at the very end of the year, we'll see. But uh, uh, we're, we're in the top three now, Brandon. One thing I wanted to add quickly was as I was watching that show, it, it is kind of a pro like it it like there's so many streaming services out there, and like who has, who whoever doesn't have the WWE Network, who has Peacock, you know? So it's kind of a disservice to it. Like that show needs to be on NBC. Like, <laughs> like, like, like yeah, but then it couldn't. Show, that curses. It curses though. Probably couldn't. It does. Run. It does curse. But like you could you could take that away. It's it just it just a show like that seems like a show. I think there's you know, just as many people watching Peacock as there's NBC nowadays, though. So I don't know. That's true, but it just seems like it needs to be in a, that show. That show needs to be an event. It's like, oh, did you see the episode Joseph Gordon Levitt was on last night? Like, whoa! And yeah. then you know, like, like it, 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 I, I, I could see people talking about that show just as like a fun, like, hey, did you check out Poker Face last night? Like, you know, put that put that show back on in like the '80s or the '90s, and everyone's talking about it i think just as like a fun you know the twilight zone you know just like one of those <laughs> murder she wrote just like these fun guest stars and just like a blast but it might also fall into like a law and order which we don't want it to fall into the, down that rabbit hole but mm. it's so good and just like more people need to be watching it that's a good one it's a lot of fun all right um my number three yes sir uh not yes sir yes chef y- yes chef thank you uh, my number three is the bear. Bear season two. Uh, again, this was on my list last year. I think both of my list last year, or actually, I don't think it was on my first list. I, I needed to watch it, and then the second list it shot up to the top. This show is amazing. It is so good. Uh, Jeremy Allen White from Shameless is in a kitchen. Season one is his brother passes away, and he he's a Michelin star chef comes back to run his his brother's restaurant season two is he's starting his own restaurant and this one this season did something that i feel like ted lasso in the first couple episodes of season three tried to do where they had these these side character centric episodes and you're like okay where the heck is ted this one there's four episodes or three or four episodes where like carmy the main character i don't think is in them at all and they do set where they focus on each like a, a different person. Like the baker goes overseas, and there's a fun guest star there. And they 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 delve into these characters, and you can see why these people are the way that they are. And they do such a good job of you actually caring about them. Um, there's it is super stressful still. Like they're all screaming at each other, but it doesn't seem like they're just screaming at each other. These people actually love each other. They love what they do. It's stressful, so they scream. Um, there's a Christmas episode that everyone is going to be talking about at the end of the year as one of the best episodes of any TV show this year. Chock full of guest stars. It's an hour long of just pure anxiety. It's just like people screaming at each other and it's, you can't look away. And it's just, this show does, it's laugh out loud, funny. It's heartbreaking. It makes you care about these characters so much. And it's so, it needs to be an hour. It's a half hour, but they do such a good job in the half hour of just packing so much in and packing all this character development in. And it's just a fantastic watch. And it's like some of these shows, it's like they get, they get 15 seasons of 20 episodes a piece and they go on forever. And then there's a show like this. You're just like, I want more, 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 more. And they give you this little tiny pieces. And when it, and the last episode, oh, it's a little side story. I was watching a lot. I had something to do. I was wild. I was like, you know what? I'm going to watch the bear before I do what I have to do. 
So I watched one episode. I was like, you know what? This one's, it's creeping into the neck of the episode. I'll watch the next one and then I'll take a break, do what I have to do, and then I'll go watch the finale. So I go, so I watch the episode, two episodes. I go do whatever I have to do. I come back and I'm like, okay, let's watch the finale. And I press play and it starts playing another show. And I realized I actually accidentally watched the finale. And it was the, not cliffhanger, but it was like setting up season three that I was sitting there like, what's going to happen next? And I didn't realize I actually watched the finale. And it was like the worst feeling ever. It's like when you grab a bag, uh, grab a chip and you think there's another one in there, there's no more chips. <laughs> it's the worst feeling ever. So I mean, it was Slim Jim's last night. And it's like, I swear I saved three of them. Like, yeah, it's the worst. Years. When you're like, one more. Oh, damn it. There's no more. So yeah. it was heartbreaking. But it's, it, that's how good it is. It's like it makes you want more. Uh, so here I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll do it before you have to do it. I I haven't seen it. I've seen uh, part of season one. I do have to catch up. So because I know you're definitely far from alone uh, and really embracing. And a show that gets better, better than season one. Mm, okay. Mm-hmm. Good to know. Good to know. Uh, coming in by number three. Uh, uh, it's not the Mandalorian. It's the other one where he looks after a little person. Uh, the Last of Us. Uh, coming in at my number three here, take off of the video game, which I played a little bit of, uh, but not a lot. <laughs> but um, oh, I'm always a fan of uh, you know post-apocalyptic things, zombie things, and I kind of like The Walking Dead. Um, I love the fact that like humans are first here. You know what I mean? Like the the the, the creatures and everything is kind of the, the backdrop to uh, these two, these two main characters here, Pedro Pascal, the young girl, um, and also one of my favorite. Again, talk about kind of side episodes. Uh, one of my favorite episodes of the year the nick offerman episode here is fucking beautiful it's wonderfully told um yeah i just uh, i was very very intrigued by this i enjoyed the world that they built here you know there's different sections kind of built off here and uh you know kind of gotta <laughs> go through you never know who you're gonna run into uh you know what kind of groups um there's one group that's a du- abducts her at one point here that's very harrowing um but yeah i thought it was very very well made here um, you know, good kind of bond between two people that at first don't want pretty much anything to do with each other and they kind of find out they need each other. Uh, another great episode, kind of her and um, uh, her, her friend and the mall, is another great episode as well. So, yeah, Last of Us coming in, uh, my number three. Top three is hard to rank. I love, I love these top three. Mm-hmm. Never heard of it. No, it's it's decent. You should give it a shot. Yeah, I've never heard of it. Um, I don't know. All right, my number two. So, my number two. I mean, going into this year, I was just like, new lassos coming out, new Ted lassos coming out, new Ted lassos coming out. That's all I cared about. All I watched Apple TV for, which I have, we'll talk about blind spots. I have like four shows on Apple TV I need to watch this year. They're crushing it this year. And here's another new show on Apple TV. You mentioned in your honorable mentions, highly recommend you watch it. Mm. Another new show. He's typing it. Is he going to type the right thing? No. Yeah. No, it is. It is shrinking, shrinking. Oh, don't say no. No, I was kidding. I was kidding. I was like, what else did I mention? That? <laughs> From the creators of Ted Lasso, Roy Kent, um, um, Brett Goldstein also uh, has the guy. Well, I forgot his name. Who's the guy who created the show? He created Scrubs and Bill Lawrence. The I was going to say, why? What? I don't know this. I love, I love Scrubs. Yeah, yeah. He, this guy just pops out. I don't know what to think with this show. Um, I knew it would probably be good. I didn't realize it'd be tremendous. It, it's another one of these shows. All these shows I'm talking about are hilarious. You said, like, yours was very comedy heavy. I'm like, oh, mine's not comedy heavy. Mine's, like, super depressing, but also super funny. A lot of these shows I'm looking at are super funny, and this one does it so good. This is Harrison Ford's best performance of his entire career. I'm going to go ahead and say it. Like, he does – I he's, he's just basically doing Harrison Ford – but he does some other stuff too, like with his character. Um, that is hilarious. Again, heartbreaking. They do such a good job. Jason Segel. It, it's one of these performances where you're like, why is this guy not like in every movie still? <laughs> like he's kind of disappeared a little bit. And I don't understand why. And this show, he is outstanding in it. Like I'm, like, I'm excited to see like these award shows coming up. Cause, but I don't know who's going to get like, like there's so many, like the bears in this game category. It's like, who's like these great, amazing performances where they're not just like, it's a sitcom. Sure. Kind of. No, not really. It's not really a sitcom. I wouldn't call it. It's more of like a dark comedy, I'd but say dra- yeah, dramedy, yeah. dramedy, but it's, it's so good. And just every, like every, we watched the, my and I watched the first episode and we're just like, is that the best show we've ever watched? Like it was just, 
it's so good it's so well done funny heartbreaking makes you want to cry makes you want to hug your hug your hug your dad hug your dog do all these things and um i hope it, it seems like it's coming back for season two um and there's just again there's so much you could do with this character because they with grief they, they actually already said they have a couple of seasons planned out this one was i think about like grief and the next one's gonna be about reconciliation and then the next one will be about like growth so you know different forms of you know getting better so a lot of stories to be told but it's nice. so good no, yeah, like I said, I, I could, I think I even said it earlier, I could very much see this ranking up a lot higher. I just felt, you know, it was one of those where, like, I've only seen the first couple to where I would have felt dirty, like, being like, it's number five, you know, being like, yeah, yeah, I haven't seen enough. Uh, yeah, yeah. So where, but I even with what I had saw, I was still like, yeah, this is still better than, <laughs> you know, things that are, you know, 15 and above for me here. Of course. Because uh, technically, at least from what I, at least say, I usually can count if I've seen at least a few. I have 33 shows that I've seen, at least a handful of, so. Um, so that's that's kind of where the ranking lied. Um, my number two. Um, let's see. Uh, your number four. We got Barry, of course. As mm-hmm. you know, I have to be talking about Barry at some point because uh, you know we've talked about it before here on other lists. Um, yeah, this is definitely easily the darkest here because now you know the the, the lies are kind of out there, um, or the truth is out there rather here, um, or some of the truth because uh, again the show <laughs> still takes some interesting turns here as well um noho hank continues to steal the show um um things between him and um uh is it escoban <laughs> esteban uh esteban. esteban yeah uh esteban. Th- that's some great great stuff here that goes on with that relationship here um between that character uh henry winkler again continues to go on and steven root too um but that gets got lost in the shuffle here and there um he has a great season as well as his kind of come up it's now as the raven and everything here um some time jumps but uh necessary for the story that they were telling here and um yeah again another show that i thought t- t- made some interesting turns here mm-hmm. doesn't always necessarily see where it's gonna go uh great silent performance by fred armison and uh yeah <laughs> barry at number two awesome okay number one we're here we're here, baby. The list. I need a guest star for this one. Ellie, come here. Come here. Come here. I need. To, come here. Sorry, I need a, a guest star to announce my final pick. Oh. So everybody, this is Ellie. Ellie. Named after, of course, the El- star Ellie of, Kemper of, of, of course, Ellie Kemper, the star of my favorite video game of all time, and my favorite show of the year. And I'm, I'm going to write it in as my favorite show of next year and the end of this year and every year plan because it did such a good job. We'll feed Ellie more. There you go, Ellie. And it's just, they crushed it. They nailed it. People complain, there's not enough zombies. It's like, sure, it didn't really... F- I think the problem with a lot of these, these shows and movies trying to cover video games is they're trying to they're trying to um capture the feeling of playing a game and sure that's cool that's important to the experience of you know of of video games but you have these amazing stories that just get pushed to the wayside like how they have not figured out how to make a good resident evil i don't understand because the story in there is incredible but they keep just throwing all these like crazy action set pieces so when people complain that there was not enough zombies, didn't picture enough of the game, they basically said, we're taking just the story. We take the cutscenes and like the, we're taking the heart of the games and we're making that a part of it. When people say that episode three didn't push the story forward, it's like it did. It you don't need, you can take a step back, right? It doesn't have to. I hate when people are like, oh, it's a bottle episode. It's like, no, it's not. It's like an amazing story set in this world. And if you care about this world, you should care about all the characters in this world. And episode, you said it already, episode three with Bill and Frank is, it's the best episode of the year. It will be the best episode of the year. It's one of the best episodes of all time. It's so well done. Um, people complained about the mall episode uh, because, I Who mean. Who are these people? If anyone complained about the offerment of the mall episodes. Uh, I've seen all of them. I've the comments. I was checking the comments. People, it's, most people were my favorite like, episodes. Who wants to complain? <laughs> Everyone wants to complain. It's just like, there's no reason to, because it's just so well done. I mean, I, I granted like the mall episode in the game did come out like a year afterwards. So that you do the whole story. Then you see that storyline afterwards. So it did kind of, 
because you know a big thing just happened so people were just mad that you didn't get to get that resolution right away um but uh the best ending in the history of video games they nailed it in this with that heartbreaking decision he has to make um i love the second game too people can suck an egg if they think the story is bad it's so good the game itself is one of the best games of all time but the story in season two i really like it a couple i do have opinions on it we won't get into that though um about season two um but this is just this is what everybody needs to do when they want to make a video game thing it's like what do people care about they don't really care about the killing and you know the killing and the, and the stuff is fun but it's like a game make me a game made me cry i played it three times a game always makes me cry that's the what you need to and then the show made me cry that's what they need to look at is like these stories like why do we play these single player experiences for these amazing stories that are being told same thing with animes these amazing stories they're trying to make these american versions of it they're just throwing all these crazy things out. People need to look at The Last of Us. And this is like a masterclass in storytelling. Um, listen to the podcast. The podcast was fantastic of just saying like eat the reason why they did every little piece. There's a reason behind everything. Ellie, come here. I know we're still talking about you. Okay, sure. Mm-hmm. You can go with um, Ellie, ladies and gentlemen. Um, <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, I can I can blabble. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. Uh, this, it's The Last of Us. It's the best. It's the best. No, it's good stuff, good stuff. Like I said, I agree that, like, you know, it's the characters are forefront, you know. Uh, the pandemic and the zombies are kind of, you know, they're part of it, but it's not it's not the main part of the show. And, yeah, I'm cool. Like the early that. Walking Dead episodes, too. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, true. That's kind of what I was trying to compare it to. It was that, like, you know, I was like, you know, when the it's the characters at are forefront, you know. And then, like, yeah, it's the, the obstacle and the shittiness of the zombies, but it's really about these characters up front. So, yeah, good choice here. Um, my number one uh, shouldn't be any surprise if you kind of do the math and maybe if you've ever seen some of our past episodes. You talked about it. I do have Ted Lasso at number one here. Oh. It was really hard to rank these top three um, because I, I don't really disagree with you a lot in what you said and why you had it lower because I do feel like, for instance, what's the one soccer guy that, like, they hype up and, like, ends up leaving? You oh, know, I love me some Zava. I don't know. I kind of felt like that was a weird detour that didn't really mean much in the end here. And like, yeah, so the the first half, I really was feeling like this is not this is easily my least favorite season. I lost then, identity a little bit. I I thought so. I really did have a feeling. Like I didn't hate it by any means. I don't want to overrate that, but no, yeah, I, I did feel that. like I didn't love it as much as I as I did the previous seasons. Then I think it started to freaking nail it um i love uh, uh our main our main girl and on the boat with the one mm-hmm. guy that's a really charming uh a segue here Amsterdam. um mm-hmm. i love um our silver-haired fox right here you know him his storyline of working for anthony stewart head and then not feeling right and kind of making his way maybe back home um uh and then the way and then i do think they really nailed it in the end you know what i mean those those um even the the, the segue when they're all in the other uh, the, uh, other uh, town or whatever uh, on the trip. I thought it was really good. And um, the finale, I think, is fantastic and really nails it. I love this show. It's my wall calendar. I wake up every morning to a picture of, of Ted Lasso. Uh, <laughs> I like it. And uh, I thought, like I said, it, it did put it over top because I do feel – I felt like it, it just it really nailed it in, in the end here. And like even like I said, even the bad part's not bad. Like, you know, what I mean like that was still fun. I just felt, I felt like it was ramping up something bigger than what it ended up being. But I love how they how they really nailed it though in the end. So uh, for now it's it's my number one. I know it hurt it hurt me to put it at what did I have it at five? Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, so, yeah you're five and four I'm my my two and one. <laughs> that's cr- but 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 like it doesn't mean I dislike like I said, like no, oh, for sure. I mean it's still that's still five and four. It's still pretty damn good. My top five are <laughs> my number ones. Like, like yeah. it, it, it was, and really the hardest decision was like basically shrinking or Ted Lasso. Which one do I go up? And like I led shrinking. I might think about it, and at the end of the season, it could be Ted Lasso at two. Like, I, yeah, I don't know. It, it's just like I said, like no complaints about it. Um, I, I did think the first half was a little weird, but then the way they ended, um, yeah. I want to revisit it. I want to rewatch the whole thing. Um, it's it's one of my favorite shows of all time. I want a Zava jersey. I want a Jamie Tart jersey. <laughs> it's and I want more. Absolutely. Uh, you want to go over your, your ten again? No. Okay. What do I got? Uh, put it up. Okay. Number ten, Black Mirror. Number nine, Hijack. Number eight, Party Down. 
Number seven, Poca Face. Number six, Succession. Number five, Ted Lasso. Number five is all these are number one. Um, number four, Barry. <laughs> number three, The Bear. Number two, Shrinking. And number one, The Last of Us. Uh, very nice, very nice. So um, my 10 here, uh, a little visual representation. Number 10, South Park. Nine, Party Down. Eight, Dave. Seven, The Righteous Gemstones. Six, The Other Two. Um, five, Ghosts. Four, Poker Face. Three, The Last of Us. Two, Barry. And number one, Ted Lasso. I gotta make one like that for the next one. Yeah, is it cool? Plus, maybe this is the reason I like track because you make lists. Uh, <laughs> I'm very easy to edit. Very easy. Um, well, Brandon, any uh, uh, plugs or, or parting words? No parting words. Um, all the beef people out there, I will watch the beef or beef on Netflix. Um, I'm looking at my. Oh, blind, yeah, Steven Yoon. Yeah, yeah. My blind spots. Um, Witcher just came out. I forgot about that. I'll watch that. I haven't watched again. Secret... I saw some of season one, so oops. yeah, I haven't watched Secret Invasion yet. I did. It's, it didn't. It didn't make it yet for me. Uh, again, only like three are out. It's early. So, it's early. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it will make it. To be honest with you, I don't think it will make it. Actually, to be honest with you, unless uh, this is the second half, I could like it. But unless that second half fucking k- kills me, I don't think it's gonna make it yeah. personally. I haven't watched any Yellowstone. Uh, when I do want to watch some, because there's zero. some of the some some of the spinoffs look pretty interesting this year. Hmm. Um, I think it was this year, right? 18, you know, I think it was this year. Oh. Um, and then Lucky Hank. I haven't really heard anything about that with Bob Odenkirk. I, again, it's right outside um, of the list here for me. I liked it, just, um, I don't know, I was never that engaged. I the, Every character, like, he's kind of ho-hum, which is the character, mm-hmm. but, yeah, I don't know. I didn't love it. And then, finally, I talked about, like, Apple TV. There's, there's uh, something called The Big Prize looked interesting. Silo looks really cool. Mm. Um, Crowded Room with uh, Tom Holland looks really, really interesting. Platonic looked fun. Yeah, Platonic, I definitely want to watch see that. that. And then The Consultant point. with Christoph Waltz on Amazon. I haven't watched that. Yeah, no, all of those, man. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm with yeah, you. I don't know. What's, is there them. anything big coming up at the end of the year? Like last year we had. I'm like, sure we'll get something in the fall, I would imagine. Yeah, I just I like I remember like, last year we had like a couple we had like the House of Drag. We had a bunch of huge ones mm. coming. I don't remember if there's anything big coming up at the end of the year, but we'll see. We will see. We will see. All right, well, Brandon, I appreciate your time, good sir. We'll hopefully see you on in the future. Uh well for Brandon, for JPO, for me, you, everything everywhere all at once. Thanks for watching. Tell a friend, tell anyone.